Hey there everybody, this is Caitlin here and welcome back to Card Game Wednesday, the day of the week where we enjoy all things card game related and it's been just a little while since we've had an actual deck profile on the channel, at least it feels like a little while since the Lunar deck profile I did a little while back, so I thought I'd come back and show you this deck profile that, of a deck that I kind of piloted. I've kind of changed some things from when I originally played this in my local tournament, so um, I will explain a couple of things that I originally had and why I've made a couple of changes. As of yet, this current build is untested because I tweaked a little things uh, or a couple of different things rather after testing this out and you know I'm I feel like I'm a little bit happier with how it's structured now but I've still to test it though so I'm not too sure how it will play but I have a better feeling about it so the deck in particular is Milliam Fairy Tales there's been I don't know if you've noticed um, a couple of articles um I was reading up on on other Force Will sites and whatnot a couple of people were taking their stab at different versions of the um, Milliam Fairy Tales and whatnot so I felt the need to actually build my own one some one on, some of the cards I do use from say some of the suggested ones like the best fairy tales that you're more likely to use in a Milliam deck some of them are a little bit different but I'll go over my reasons as to why I've included some of these so obviously Milliam he's way 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 back from the starter decks Milliam the prince of the light palace he's a light ruler his judgment is three which is two light and one void he comes with the light energize and you may pay the attribute of fairy tale resonators with light well and my apologies if you hear any fireworks in the background. The night I am recording this is actually bonfire night, so you may hear some fireworks going off in the background. I do apologize for that. But when Milliam flips over, he becomes a Milliam, the voice of a new generation. He is a 900-900. When he enters the field, we may put the top card of our Magic Stone deck into our field. Sorry if he's a little bit glary there under the light of my camera and whatnot. We can still pay the cost of fairy tale resonators with Lightwell. And whenever this card attacks or blocks, we force for one, where we roll a die and we put X amount of 100-100 counters on this card, where X is the result of the roll, which is very, very awesome indeed. I try my best not to have to flip Milliam, but on the off chance that I need a way to try and, like, finish off the next turn, I will flip him and uh, hopefully hope for, like, a really good, decent roll off of the force and maybe even use a couple of other spells and whatnot to try and boost him a little bit. So going into the main deck here, and it's a bit of a chunky deck here, we are starting off with do, 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 four of Wendy. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Dreaming Girl Wendy, which this one's a little bit too shiny, so I can't really read it too well. But we've got four of them here. And what does Wendy do in particular? Well, she's a one-cost resonator, of course. She's 200-300, a fairy tale. Whenever another fairy tale resonator enters your field, you can recover this card, which is very nice indeed. This card gains 200-200 as long as you control a magic stone and control no special magic stones. This deck is actually mono-light, technically, because we are only running light magic stones. As, as the camera would like to focus on the cards, please. And as long as you control Eternal Boy Peter Pan, this card cannot be attacked and gains flying. I am not running Peter Pan in this current build. I might try it out in sideboard in the future. As it is right now, I don't have Peter Pan either in the deck or in a sideboard. I don't actually have a sideboard for this deck, but um, I am thinking about it and I may include Peter Pan in it. It's just that I've been like, I have such a love-hate relationship with Peter Pan. Sometimes I like him in the deck, sometimes I don't. At the current build, I don't have him. Um, may change that because there's not many resonators I have in this deck that have flying um so i might change that but currently i'm just running wendy without peter pan mainly as like a, a decent one drop that can you know, take a little hit she like as long as we have like our magic stone which is basically any of our stones because they're all mono light she gets the two two which is very very nice so she gets up to a 400 500 which is very nice indeed and yeah we're running four copies of her Next up, we actually have a card, which you'll probably be a little bit confused as to why I'm running it. Uh, we have three copies of Schrodinger the Cat in Flux, and I actually have a full art of this, which I'm very, very proud of. It's a two cost, it's a darkness and a light, a 100-600. The reason why I'm playing this, and you'll be wondering, Caitlin, you can't cast this when you only have mono light stones. Well, there's two options for us, there's two ways that we can play this. So, the first one is obviously with Black Heart Alice, because when Black Heart Alice enters the field, she can search out Schrodinger and put him straight into the field, so we don't have to worry about paying the cost of Schrodinger. There's also the possibility that using the Grim from Vingolf 3, Grim turns everything from your deck to your graveyard to your entire field into a fairy tale. Therefore, Schrodinger would be playable without the need to pay his darkness cost. If we have neither of those conditions, we sadly cannot play Schrodinger, which is one of the caveats of this deck is that we kind of heavily rely on either getting Grim out or playing Blackheart Alice to get Schrodinger out, but he's not really a make or break decision for this deck. It's just a handy little gimmick, I feel, to have in this deck to be able to like drag out a Resonator while playing a big cost Resonator like Blackheart Alice. So that's why we're only running three of him. He obviously has the ability that whenever a Resonator is put into a graveyard from your opponent's field, you remove that card from the game, and if you do, put a 500-500 Darkness Shadow 
Colorado resident your token into your field. And when Schrodinger leaves the field for a non-field zone, so like when he dies or gets removed from game, you destroy all shadow resident your tokens you control. He's only 100, 600, but hopefully by turning him into a fairy tale and therefore in turn uh, using Grim, turning all our shadow tokens into fairy tales, uh, that would you know make our field a lot, lot better. And you know, since the fairy tales are entering, you could recover Wendy and all sorts like that. So he's not really an essential part of the deck, but I do like the kind of like combo that you can get off there if you manage to get it off. Next up for this deck, we have three copies of a Red Riding Hood. I am tempted to boost up to four, um, just currently because I feel like I don't draw her enough. I do really like this card, but I may end up putting a fourth one in. I'm not too sure yet. I'm going to try it out still at three. She's two wind, but obviously since she's a fairy tale, we can play her for light. She starts off as a 300-400 fairy tale, and she has a little wall of text here, so let me read this. When this card uh, is put into the graveyard from your field, you put the top card of your magic stone deck into your field arrested, so we get a little bit of a stone rampage there. This card gains four. 400, 300, as long as you control 5 or more magic stones. And she also gains swiftness, first strike, and precision, as long as you control 7 or more magic stones. So she's pretty good in that even if she dies, we don't care too much because she is getting us more stones. And on the plus side, the more stones that we have out, when we play her, the better she gets. So, like, she's one of those ones where, similar to some other cards, where, like, the more the less life we have, the better the, the better situation we are at. The more stones we have, the better Red Riding Hood is. So, I'm contemplating maybe putting her up to four. I feel comfortable enough having her at three, but four would be nice as well. And she is one of my favourites. She's one of my favourite cards ever since she came out. And I believe it was CFC she came out, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, CFC that she came out in. So, way, way, way back at the start of Lapis Cluster. But she's one of my favourites, so she had to go in this deck list somewhere. And funnily enough, this one's not a fairy tale as well. I'm running to Saul, Envoys of Light. For the sole reason, uh, get it, Saul, Saul, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for the sole reason is that we're running Mono Light, meaning that we can ramp up with our Light Stones. I only have two copies of him because um, in this deck because I only own two copies. I haven't gotten a playset yet. He is a two cost. He's one Light and one Void for 400, 400. His effect here is that when this card enters your field, you reveal the top card of your Magic Stone deck. If it's a non-special Light Magic Stone, you put it into your field. That's mainly the reason why he's in here and to fill up a little bit of space and hopefully if we get Vengolf 3 Grimm out he can become a fairy tale as well which is a very very nice. Speaking of Vengolf 3 Grimm here he is I only have two copies of him again I don't have play sets of very many cards from Vengolf 3 I think the only play set I actually have from Vengolf 3 is um, Little Red Riding Hood the fairy tale of air who isn't in this deck because it's a mono light deck but I am hoping to try and get some play sets and waiting for Big Orbit to hopefully have a sale sometime soon and I'll be able to get some maybe some more play sets and stuff that I need but going back to Grim here Grim the legendary king of fairy tales he is a three cost he's two light and one void he's an 800 800 and again very sorry that the camera isn't picking up the text very well here I think it's just the lighting conditions uh, of my lights above there are maybe a little bit too yellow so it's kind of hard to pick up the cards here but Resonators you control and Resonators you own in non-field zones gain fairy tale in addition to their other races, which is where it comes in that everything is a fairy tale basically. This card gains, whenever this card attacks or blocks, you force for one. This card gains X0 uh, zero, zero until end of turn, where X is the result of the roll, as long as your J ruler is Millium, the Prince of Light Palace, or Millium voice when introducing. So since Millium is our ruler, thankfully, uh, Grim gets the ability that whenever he attacks or blocks, we roll, um, we basically force for one, and we get XX to his defense, whatever, whatever the result of the roll is. Which is very good. I was contemplating running the Pandora that um, basically doubles the force rolls or whatever, but I really couldn't find any space for in this deck. I mainly wanted to focus on fairy tales, and you'll see that the only two things really that aren't fairy tale are kind of more sequential to the deck, so that's why I wasn't running that Pandora. Um, but other than that, that's really all that's coming from this Grim here, and other than the fact that he's fixing it so that we can play um, Schrodinger if we don't get Blackheart Alice out. Next up, we have two copies of Snow White the Avenger, not one of the first, not one of the Marvel Avengers, as I dropped the other one. Very apol very, uh, very apologies, very sorry, Snow White there. She is a three cost, she's one fire, one light, and one void, an 800-800. Obviously, since she's a fairy tale, we can just play her for light. She comes with precision, and she gets better the less life we have here. So she gains first strike as long as our light is 3,000 or less. She gains swiftness as long as our life is 2,000 or less. And she gains plus 400-400 as long as our life is 1,000 or less. So she gets more dangerous the longer she sits in the field and the less life we have which is very nice like being on the brink of death and being able to play a snow white she comes in at basically a 12 12 with swiftness first strike and precision which is a very very scary when you're near end game so she can really bring you back i only have two of her again i need to get more copies of some of these vengolf three cards because some of them are really really good some of them 
I wasn't too impressed with, but some of them were really amazing. I also hope that maybe in the future she gets a promo like of this version of the card because recently they've been doing it where a couple of the Vingolf 3 cards have been getting pre-release promos. They did it with Abdul, they did it with Triton, and now they're doing it with Oberon. So I'm kind of hoping maybe the next one will be Snow White if we get another pre-release one which is from Vingolf 3. That would be really cool. I would really like to see a Snow White promo. Next up, we have a little bit of a random one-off. We have one dark red riding hood. This is a little bit of a random pick, I know, as the camera struggles to focus on her because she's so super textured and shiny there. I mean, look at that texture there. That is amazing. She is a ra rather odd card for me to stick in this deck, but mainly because I only like I had the space for one of her, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to slap her in here. I originally did have um, copies of Dark Alice from Echoes of the New World until I realised, much to my horror, that Dark Alice is only a wonder. She is not a fairy tale, so I can't play her unless I have Grim out in the field, and considering I only have two Grim, that is less likely to happen. So I had to cut um, Dark Alice because I literally couldn't play her unless I got Grim out, which was a bit of a bummer. So that's why we've got Dark Red Raining Hood instead. She is a three cost, she's three black, but because she's a fairy tale, we can just pay light for her. She's a seven 800, 800 and she has this big massive wall of text some of it doesn't really apply to us because we don't have mystery counters which is you know neither here or there this card gains whenever this card deals damage to a resonator destroy the resonator as long as your life is 2000 or less this card gains swiftness as long as your life is 1000 or less when this ooh, card focus please when this card enters the field you may remove two mystery counters that doesn't matter because we're not using mystery counters and whenever this card attacks it deals 200 damage to a target player or resonator and again 200 life i need to try and get more copies of this card because it is a very good card it's just that it's got the problem where it's an ancient knights sr and ancient knights srs are like a pain to get specifics of if you are looking for a specific sr or something it is going to be really tricky to get a playset of it because of the rarities and whatnot how ancient knights work but i am going to hopefully try and get a playset because i really like dark red riding hoods and i i would love to get a, like a playset full arts if i could as expensive as that would be and then next up something that i do actually have a playset of in full art but i don't run the entire playset in this deck are three black car alice to go with our three schrodingers she is pretty awesome i like her i really like her a lot especially her artwork and her gimmick she has a 4 cost, she's a darkness, a light, and 2 void, but we only need to pay light for her. 800, 1000 attack, she has, or 800 attack and 1000 defense. She has precision and flying, which is very nice. Now, watch me struggle to read this through the awesome texture and full artness of this card as the camera tries to struggle and focus on the rainbow-ness that is happening here. When this card enters the field, we can search our deck for Schrodinger, the cannon flux, and put it into our field, then we shuffle our deck, or we can use her ability to pay a light, a dark, and a void to banish a non-token resonator, and we destroy a non-magic stone non general card we are not using this ability because we have no access to darkness and our magic stones we are only using her for her awesome swinging ability her flying potential and the ability to bring in schrodinger uh, to the field so we're running three of her and now currently this is one that is obviously going to maybe get the boot from this deck it may get the cut because recently if you've been you know on the internet and you've not been hiding under a rock there have been talks of the eu ban list that's came out where captain hook is banned um, and it seems to be that m the majority of other continents are also adopting this ban for potentially for um, Grand Prix and for area GPs and whatnot. So it looks to be that Captain Hook will be, you know, no longer along with Prisia and along with Griffin. As of now, uh, there's not really any news for the UK. I feel like because it's an EU situation where the, the pretty much the whole of the EU has decided to ban uh, these three cards but we haven't had any like news in the UK technically I suppose if we are going to have a GP next year in the UK they would probably have to adopt this ban so it's fair as of right now though um our our local game store isn't adopting the ban yet I think we are waiting until after Christmas um for it to end it so as of right now I am still running two captain hooks this will probably change if I keep running this deck after Christmas because I feel like we're going to be putting in the ban in some point it is most likely going to happen after Christmas for our locals anyway so that's really why this deck is running Captain Hook at the present time. Captain Hook, obviously, he's an insanely good card. I can understand why he's getting the ban. He has a 5 cost, 2 water, and 3 void. No need to worry about the water. He's a 1000, 1000. And he has the option that when he enters the field, we can choose one. We can either put two target special magic stones on top of their owner's deck, or uh, we can put them return up to two target resonators to their owner's hands. Most of the time, I would pick stones if they have special magic stones, or if they've got some annoying resonators in the field that don't have, like, massively good enter abilities then i would choose the resonators but he is a pretty good um end game and by the time you get him out as long as you can keep him alive he can pretty much win the game for you so that's pretty much all of our resonators and now we are looking into our spells our big chunky like group of spells here 
going into it, we have two copies of the final word. This is one of my favourite cards to ever, just to like trick people out or whatever with it. It's a quick cast, one cost light. We can uh, target blocking Resonator, you control gains 1000-1000 until end of turn. I love this card so much for psyching people out into like baiting them into swinging into something and then using this to make my thing absolutely massive to kill their Resonator. I love using this ability, only running two because um, I can't find my non Vingolf 3 copies of this, so I'm trying to find them, but I'm run currently running two of this one. We are also running two of the Protective Barrier, which I always forget this card exists, but it was only because of Bingo 3 that it reminded me of it, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to stick it in. It's another one drop quick cast one. Uh, prevent all damage that would be dealt to target Resonator until end of turn. Very handy, I'm running two copies of that. We also have four copies, count them, four copies of Dreams of Flight, um, which is a one cost quick cast as well. It also comes with Remnant, so technically we can play this card up to uh, eight times in the game if we manage to draw all four of them and use the will. We basically force for one where we roll a dice and the target J slash Resonator gains X 100-100 and flying until end of turn where X is the result of the roll. Um, this is one of the main ways that we can give our Resonators flying considering that barely any of them actually have flying naturally. Um, and this is obviously just for hijinks as well to like swing in over our opponent's head and hit them for face for quite large. It is quite funny to be able to Remnant this quite a few times in any one game. Uh, which is why I love doing it and everything. And then next up we have one of the newer cards here. We actually have blah, 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 Reduction, which is a very nice card. I quite like it. I also like the artwork of it as well. It is a two cost, so tiny bit more expensive than those previous cards. Um, It's one light and one void. It has quick cast, obviously. Target Resonator becomes a 0-100 until the end of turn. I love playing this card so much. There was one game where I played this literally once per turn for the, like the following four turns to prevent my opponent from attacking with their biggest Resonator, uh, which was pretty funny. It was like they were like, getting so frustrated that every time they went to swing with their big Resonator, they weren't getting it off because I kept using Reduction uh, because I was trying to stall them to the best of my ability. But that's why we're running four copies of this because it is a pretty good stall tactic and whatnot if they've got like a really big, scary Resonator. We also have two copies here of Manifestation of Power, a two drop quick cast one of one light and one void. We can choose one, we can recover target resonator that we control and draw a card or destroy target addition. This is mainly to try and get around um, circle, I think it's zero circle of protection or circle, yeah, it's cir zero circle of protection um, because that is a very annoying addition as well as destroying things like the statue that lets you use all colours in your stones and everything like that or any other pesky additions that are really annoying. That's what I mainly use it for. Um, other than that, I barely use the first one the first one's really not really a priority it's mainly for addition destruction for light then next up we have three copies of a magic switch which is uh, again uh, exclusive to million starter deck it's a one cost one drop magic suites quick cast target j slash resonator you control against 200 200 and barrier until end of term obviously cards with barriers cannot be targeted by spells or abilities your opponent controls this is nice a nice like a simple way of getting our card to be protected from things that target because targeting things is a bit of a bummer and we don't have anything that kind of like, like just mass protects our stuff so that's why we're running three of this although i will tell you this kind of mass protects our stuff but usually only if it's being targeted and whatnot because it's obviously zero circle of protection the three cost uh, addition one light and two void where when it enters the field we choose an attribute and j slash resonators we control gain barrier from the chosen attribute and um, this prevents them uh, from being targeted by that attribute I don't believe it stops it from hurting them uh, if it's just like a general like area thing. So say if it's just like it affects all resonators, it doesn't target. I don't believe the circle protects them from it. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works because obviously a barrier is from specifically targeting. Uh, so that's how I believe it works. And nothing really to say about our magic stones, except nine of them are the zero light magic stones. And I have one that doesn't match because I only have nine copies of zero's magic stone. Uh, I need to get one more just so I have an actual full deck of zero's magic stone. Because this is like best light magic stone ever because it features zero. And then other than that, we have no sideboard. I've just got some shadow tokens. Uh, some of them are the Vingolf ones, I believe. Are these Vingolf ones? No, I don't think so. Or are they? I'm not too sure. Some of them are just like different resonator shadow tokens and whatnot. I think these are the 500-500 ones and these are the 100-100 ones. But that is basically it, guys, for my rendition of Millium, the Prince of Fairy Tales or Prince of the Light Palace or whatever you want to call him. Let me know down below, guys, what you think of this deck. If you would make some changes to it, there are some fairy tales that I've not included in this deck that you would have instead. I'd like to hear your thoughts, guys, on these deck profiles. I will hopefully try and get a recording of a feature match featuring this deck, hopefully. You might see me that in like the next week or two, hopefully, fingers crossed, if I can get some recording done at my locals. And until next time, guys, I will see you all later.